Welcome into a episode, another episode of the A-List Podcast. I'm Kwani A. Lunas, joined by H.R. Blakely and Gary Washburn. After a Game 7 win from the Boston Celtics, they're now headed to the Eastern Conference Finals. Are we surprised? Because I'm not surprised. No, we ain't surprised. I mean, l- listen, if you're going to be a champion, you got to not, you got to take that crown. And what better team to, to do that against to get to the Conference Finals than the champ themselves? Uh, The Celtics played a great series. I I thought that it was by no means a perfect series. But even when they were losing games, you still felt as though they had a certain semblance of control, not not of the series per se, but just of their ability to win this thing. You never felt, even when they were down 3-2, there wasn't a clear sense that they were going to be beat by Milwaukee as much as it felt like they may allow themselves to lose. It, It really did feel as though this was their series to win. They were the deeper team. They were they had home court advantage. And, you know, we, we would be remiss if we didn't mention the fact that Chris Middleton played not a single game. And that is a huge benefit for the Celtics. And some may look at that and say, well, the Celtics didn't really beat him because they didn't have Chris Middleton. You start looking at the teams that win championships. Golden State's dynasty began because they played a series of teams that either didn't have the starting point guard for some or all of that series. So it really doesn't matter how you win when the playoffs roll around. It's a matter of all about getting them dubs. We have Gary live in Miami. What do you think? <laughs> that boy is feeling the heat. That boy is feeling the heat, yeah, literally. Well, summer. <laughs> you know what? Like, I thought it was a, a – I thought it showed a lot of guts and gill for the Celtics to come back down 3-2. I mean, you know, the thing I, about the Celtics situation is they have been knocking on the door for the last several years, you know. Mm-hmm. 2017 and 18, we reached the Eastern Conference Finals, but running into LeBron, um, you know, the disaster of 19 when Kyrie kind of checked out, 20, the bubble, losing to Miami in the Eastern Conference Finals, uh, you know, last year's disappointment with Brooklyn. But then this year, I, it was good to see them knock the door down. And I thought about getting to the finals. They still got another big door to knock down. But to defeat the defending champ, be down 3-2 with game six on the road. And, you know, let's be honest, like, they got beat, wholeheartedly beaten in one of the seven games, the game one. Game two, game three, you know, they got cute with a one-point lead. They missed some open threes, and then Jalen went on that layup, mm-hmm. took on three guys, thinking he was going to get a foul, and all of a sudden they lost that game, and then, took, you know, Giannis and Holiday hit, hit a couple of baskets, and then the Marcus Smart, did he shoot a three? And then, obviously, the blown game in game five. So, they lost one of the games. If they had lost the series, they would have, it would have been really disastrous in terms of just, like, their regrets. Um, you know, like, they could have won this series. So, I think for the franchise, for the state of the franchise, it was good that they were able to pull this out that they blew them out, two blowouts in the series, and then that impressive game six win. So, you know, this team continues to surprise me. I was like, game six, I was like, I think they'll hang in there and play well, but they'll probably, you know, Giannis will probably go for 20 in the fourth, and they'll they'll lose on the road, the crowd, and all that. But when they won that game, I was like, wow, this is a different team than maybe the last couple of years of the Brad Stevens era. So. I thought it was an impressive series. And Middleton's a great player. I mean, he would have made a difference, but would he have won them, you know, two or three more games? Would, would, like, who knows what would have happened uh, with him there? You know, you can't really say that. You know, Brooklyn beat the Celtics last year without Jalen. You know, the LeBron team went to the East Conference Finals. Remember, it was no, no Hayward or Kyrie. So that stuff happens. Yeah. Yeah, and someone brought up that, well, for one, it's always impressive when you can get a Game 7 win at home in Geno time. Like that, like you both mentioned, is very impressive overall. But I think now that we're looking forward to this Miami Heat series, one thing that I think is on a lot of people's mind is the fact that in 2020, they lost to the Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals. And this could, well, they lost three straight playoff series to the Heat already. So what do they have to do this time? Obviously, there have been different rosters. but 
what do they have to do this time to be effective? Koji. Well, it's very reminiscent because when they beat Toronto in 2020 in the bubble, they thought we had slayed the drag. Mm-hmm. Like Nick, mm-hmm. Nick Nurse threw all types of defenses. Kimba played poorly. They lost in a last second shot by OJ and Obi that they would have had a 3 0 lead and instead of made it 2 1 and changed the whole series. Like all of the above, they felt like we went through the ringer. There's nothing that Miami can bring that we aren't ready for. And they were dead wrong. Miami out. The key game in that series was game one when they were up 15 early in the fourth quarter, kind of like game six, sorry, game five against the Bucks. They gave up the lead. Jason uh, took one of those, like, you know, that Sassy doesn't take as much anymore, that, you know, contested step back 28 foot three to try to win it. Then he got blocked by Adebayo and Buzzer, and that changed the entire series. If something win that game, they probably win the series. They lost game two, then all the stuff in the locker room with Marcus Smart. They made it a series, but they, you know, Tyler Hero goes for 37 off the bench in game six, or, or sorry, game four. So to me, they have to remember that. Miami plays with toughness, and they added a couple of dogs to their roster. PJ Tucker is a dog mm-hmm. to join Jimmy Butler, to join Adebayo, okay? Kyle Lowry is injured, but he's another dog who has had much success with the Celtics over the years. And then you got shooters. Tyler Hero. Duncan Robinson's not playing as much. Max Struess, former Celtic. You don't think he wants to stick to his team for cutting him and taking Javante Green over him or in Taco or whatever. They could have they could have kept Struess on a two-way. They ended up keeping Taco. So, you know, in Tremont Waters. So you know, Struess, I'm sure, is like, hey, I wouldn't mind knocking these dudes out. I have a so, game. <laughs> yeah, they've gotta be they've gotta be ready. They can't think, well, we went through Giannis, we've seen it all. Spulcher is a great coach. Yeah. He completely out coached Brad in that 2020 series with his own defense. Um, but there's some differences. Daniel Tice was playing starting the center. It's Al Horford now, and then if you get some Robert Williams in there. No Kimba, so they don't have a defense, defensive liability on the floor. Um, and you got to trust Ime is going to have a game plan to fight Miami. Miami's going to shoot a lot of threes. They're going to move the ball. They're going to let Adebayo take the ball down the floor. That would, The Celtics did not defend Adebayo in that series. He was a monster. And if he and Gordon Drogic don't get hurt in the finals, they might, be, they might have knocked off the Lakers. They were just injured, as we talked about injuries in big series. So the Celtics got to be ready for war. No, none of this. Well, we slayed the drag. We got rid of Giannis. We went over. There's nothing we can't can't see. We're nothing we haven't seen. No, that's not true. Wait till Swalsher's game one game plan, and they're going to have to adjust. We'll see if they do. Yeah, I I think that the biggest challenge that they're going to face in this will be, which will be a little bit different from the others, is that there's going to be an elite level of mental toughness on display in this series. And you either meet that or you get put down on the mat. They, there's no there's no middle ground to, to this if the Celtics are going to win this series. As Gary mentioned, Jimmy Butler, mentally tough guy. P.J. Tucker, mentally tough guy. Bam out of bio. All those guys are dogs that are mentally tough that you're just not going to punk them. You're not going to intimidate them at any point in the series. And for the Celtics, you're going to have – this is an opportunity for some of your potential dogs in training – to step up and have a chance to be a difference maker. A guy that I'm going to be looking out for if I'm the Celtics is Grant Williams. Uh, And even before his game seven exploits, Grant Williams had shown some level of toughness that was a little bit more enhanced than we've seen before. On more than one occasion, we saw him get in Giannis's face. We've seen him throw hard fouls on Giannis, which is something that no one in this league really does. Uh, and, and Grant, again, his ability to switch you know, one through five, for the most part, gives him the opportunity to make an impact as a defender. And if he's knocking down a three ball the way he did in game seven, that gives the Celtics a, a chance to have a guy who's bringing it both from a physical standpoint and from a mental tough standpoint. And, you know, the, the wild card, the wild card in this series for me, just like it has been frankly for most of the season is Robert Williams. I mean, what can you potentially get out of him? Because if he's able to play somewhere close 
to the level that he was before he started, before he got hurt, that is going to, it's not going to shut Bam out of bio down, but it's going to make him less impactful. And if you're able to take or at least minimize his impact, that is going to give you a significantly great chance at winning this series. Uh, so the, the Celtics, they've got some question marks. They've got some, some, some players that I think are in that to be determined impact on this series. But I think right now, the one thing we saw in the, in the Milwaukee series was that guys are not afraid of the moment. Uh, they're not afraid to step up when they need to. I mean, you know, we talked about Grant Williams. We talked about Rob Williams. Peyton Pritch is another guy that I thought did a lot of really good things in that pivotal game seven. And granted, it does always help when you're at home. But if we're being honest and keeping it real, it's not like home court advantage was all that much of an advantage for them in this okay. damn series. They yeah. got that ass whipped a couple times at the crib by the Bucks. So the fact that they've got some guys who are kind of on the peripheral who stepped up in a big time must win, winner moves on type of situation. It gives them confidence going into Miami, knowing that this is a team that they've had success against in the past as far as the regular season. But more than that, they're playing, I think, and being the best version of themselves at the right time in order to keep moving on and get to the NBA Finals, which is the goal. Agreed. And I don't know if you guys saw Jason Tatum, He his shirt today, at, well, the as they flew into Miami, said it has a picture of Jordan. It says, heart is what separates the good from the great. Ooh. Ooh. Sending messages to the to the league. I think the league should be on notice. Is that what's what Tatum's Tatum, trying to do? <laughs> Tatum is feeling himself. Uh, is. The only person who I think has maybe more feel or swag about who they are right now is Deuce, his son. <laughs> He's ready for Miami. Because du Deuce, Deuce, is like, Deuce is ready for Miami. I don't think Miami is ready for Deuce, but Deuce is damn sure ready for Miami. But uh, listen, T Tatum, I just think Tatum, he's, he's understanding that his impact, not just in terms of wins and losses, but in terms of winning a championship, cannot be any greater now. Um, I thought his game seven, even though Grant Williams, you know, kind of stole the headlines, and deservedly so. I thought the way Tatum kind of paced himself and impacted the game was maybe one of the better games he has had in understanding what the game needed from him on that night. I mean, he shot 50% from the field. He had 23 points, had eight assists, could have had two, three more. I didn't like the, the seven turnovers, but, uh, you know, again, when you are a high usage player, you can live with the turnovers because you've got the ball in your hands a lot. Uh, it's That was one of the frustrating things about Tatum before he'd have a high usage and have like two assists and like five turnovers. That ain't going to work. So Tatum is understanding how he has to evolve into not just being a good player, which we all, I think there's, a, there's, you know, unanimous on that, but can he be a great one? These are the series. These are the moments that define how great you are going to be and how you will be seen by others, your peers. Mm -hmm. Gary, I know you're old school. How do you feel about, shirts and messages and <laughs> how, how do i feel about shirts okay what do you think uh, about clothing <laughs> no the one i'm gonna i'm gonna be honest Kwani. the one thing i never want to see again in nba history is another damn short set like let's oh let's, let's cancel let's cancel the show there let's cancel the short sets because Y'all two six nine brothers, hey, too big. That short set short was set. fire. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> short, short, I, I kind of no. like the short set this time of uh, year. Uh, let's put a stop to the short set. We ain't <laughs> our uncles at the barbecue. We ain't that like that's no. Yeah. And, and then Ben Ben Simmons had the all green one on on the sideline on the mm -hmm. uh, Celtics series. Kwani, tell your people, tell your tell, tell your twenty something, tell your twenty somethings, chill, slow down with the. With, with the short sets, just just, just put a put wear it to the picnic, you know. Do not wear to a, we're gonna wear what we want. <laughs> exactly. Do not do not wear it to an NBA arena near you, please. <laughs> um, don't keep away from the arena. But anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, I I think I think Tatum is. I mean, you know, I think this is personal for him. Like he's close to he's a good friend of Bam Adebayo. Um. And I'm and Alabama got the best of them in that 2020 series. I think that 2020 series is very, very important um, for education for Jalen and Jason. They got punked in that series. Marcus was the only one who tried, and Marcus was in that 
Mar- it was a different Marcus in that series. Marcus was three point Marcus in that series, and then during that postseason, I mean, he was chucking them. I think he chucked thirteen in the deciding game six. Like Marcus was really trying to be because Kimbo was neutralized, so Marcus was really trying to be that third offensive option behind Jalen and Jason. And I think now he's a completely different player than he was two years ago because he doesn't have to be that third offensive option. Um, but I think this series is personal for those guys. They have to remember. I mean, obviously, I was in the bubble. I saw what went down after game two. They were just, they were sent to, I mean, they were, they were down there fighting each other after that, after just kind of being broken down in another fourth quarter by Jimmy and his guys. You know, Jimmy and those guys wanted it more. And, you know, the thing is, is that do the Celtics want this more than Jimmy? Jimmy wants to return to the final. He wants to win the championship. You know, he wants a title. Um, You know, do they want it more than the Heat do? And I think that's the fundamental question. The Celtics got to have some real want to. They wanted it more than the Bucs. The Bucs, not saying the Bucs didn't want it, didn't want to repeat, but the Bucs got tired. I think Budenhauser knew eventually probably midway third quarter, you know, we don't have the guy. We just don't have the dogs. You know, Wesley Matthews, Grayson Allen, Pat Conson, I'm throwing guys out there that can't get the job done. Bobby Portis didn't have a I thought Bobby would have a really good series. He had one great game, obviously the rebound game in game five. Like, you know, Brooke Lopez had a good first half to kind of fizzle. Like, Bud knew that he, he didn't have the guns. The Heat feel like this is their year, right? I mean, you look at the West, Golden, they, they feel like they can beat the Warriors or Dallas, so the Heat want it badly. Do the Celtics want it just as much, if not more? Jason and Jalen have to remember, and Marcus have to remember that 2020 series and be like, we didn't like that feeling. Getting punked in the fourth quarter, watching Jimmy you know, hit big shots, bam out of bio, dunking on people, Tyler Hero, kissing to the crowd. Like, you need to watch that replay of that and, and get mad all over again and don't don't that let that happen again sure. absolutely gary and 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 you know what we're talking about in, in essence when you talk about the celtics and you talk about the heat is teams that understand the importance of value of putting in that work and we got an amazing partner when it comes to talking about putting in that work and that is indeed.com no one has a business like yours with all its strengths and challenges to succeed, you need a hiring partner that adapts to your needs. You need Indeed. Indeed, 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 indeed. indeed. Uh, Indeed is a hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates when the right with the right skills, Indeed is a powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. Find great talent faster through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. With Instant Match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed matches their job descriptions the moment they sponsor a job, according to Indeed data. And and as someone who has used Indeed, and I've used it with my students as well, uh, it's a great tool to get them connected with job opportunities that they would not otherwise know about. And for those employers, it gets you potential pipeline to individuals who have skills that you may feel that you need that you may not be aware of. So Indeed, to me, it's one of the great win-win creators out there when it comes to job placement and things of that nature. So again, start hiring now and you'll get a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash A-list. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at indeed.com slash A-list. Indeed.com slash A-list. Terms and conditions apply. Paid per qualified applicant not available for all users. Again, if you need to hire, you need Indeed. Now, what we what we need <laughs> is to talk a little bit more about, about these Boston series. Celtics and this series coming up with the Miami Heat. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm curious from from either one of you. Just what do you what what concerns you most about the Miami Heat at this point? Because we've seen the Celtics. We we kind of been there, done it. We kind of know what they're about. What concerns you about the Miami Heat, though, Kwani? Mm. Well, obviously, a lot is concerning. You have Jimmy Butler. You have the potential Max Struess revenge game. But the X factor, I also think, 
and this may not get talked about enough, but them being in Miami, like, is that going to be a distraction for this team? And I'm not trying to disrespect the players and say that, you know, they're not taking this playoff game, this playoff series seriously. But I mean, if I'm 20 something in Miami and I'm on a work trip, there's only so much trouble that could possibly be gotten into. So I'm there's I'm, a lot of trouble. You know, especially when you have millions of dollars. If I went to Miami, I wouldn't get in that much trouble. I don't have millions of dollars. So <laughs> But overall, yeah, I just I'm curious as to how they'll lock in, how they will focus on the series at hand. I again, I'm not saying don't have any fun. You're in a warm climate. But I think that's something that they definitely have to keep in mind because Boston nightlife and Miami nightlife are nothing like are not the same at all. So it could be a little distracting to be in a city that is fun, despite the fact that you do have this goal at hand. Kwani in a new city that's fun and her hair did? Ooh, Ooh. that's trouble. Trouble. Ooh. That's trouble. <laughs> what you got, Gary? Because you Gary's there. So, Gary, what, 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 what you got? What do you think you need to worry about with Miami? Stay out of trouble, Gary. <laughs> well, you would hope You would hope that, I mean, they got in. They just got in a couple hours ago. They're not going to go party on a Monday night before a game. And then the other off nights are Wednesday night. You know, I mean, there's parties every night in Miami, obviously yeah. trouble and, and all the all the nightlife. But you would hope that they're focused enough and they bring maybe their families are here and they can just kind of use it as a, you know, a little, not vacation, but for the families, relaxing at the pool, mm-hmm. getting some really good weather and the families that are there as opposed to them trying to get out. I don't know if that's a major concern. My concern is just the toughness factor. Just, yeah. you know, out of bio, is just a guy who's just an X factor because he can guard all five positions. He can shoot from the mid range. You know, the, the um, his bugaboo is, is, at times has been foul trouble, but he's a guy that is so unique and he just dominated that series in 2020. I just go back to that 2020 series because it was just, you know, he just controlled the whole things. He would, you know, the pick and rolls and it was obviously, obviously the personnel was different. Uh, 65% Gordon Hayward, Daniel Tice, who's got a, had a prominent role, Kimba Walker, his confidence shot, his knee not quite right. Young Jason and young Jalen, like, you know, Jason still doing the Kobe stuff. Jalen being a little bit more erratic and inconsistent. So you got to think that time will uh, tell a different story in terms of like what will happen this year. But I just think that out of bio guy, along with like PJ Tucker, PJ's that guy who, he's the their body portis. He's relentless on the boards. He's gonna push some, shove some guys. He's gonna do, he's gonna get away with some dirty tricks. You know, he's gonna do whatever it takes to win. Do, you know, is it Grant? Do they can the Celtics match that toughness and intensity from game one? Don't give away game one because they're tired. They just got through a long series and then then you gotta suddenly try to game two becomes a big game. Try mm-hmm. to knock them in the mouth first. Uh you know, this is a team that they lost twice to Philly uh, in that series and didn't look good in those losses. So they're beatable, but the Celtics got to focus, laser focus from game one. And we'll see the difference between the Stevens era and the Udoka era in the preparation of the series, this for the series. I don't think, I think Brad was serious, but I don't think that they had the toughness or the, were they prepared at all for what Miami brought to the table in that series, I think you, you, Ime Udoka will be ready. Hey, Wait, Gary, but, I, that being said, like Eric Spolstra has been in Miami for almost 15 years. So I think that's the, the coaching matchup is something that's going to be excited to look forward to as well. You have the rookie coach versus this very experienced NBA coach, two time, three time, I think, NBA champion. So he knows how to win. Obviously, he has different pieces on his roster, but. I'm curious to see how they those two coaching matchups play out. Well, kind of piggybacking off of what Gary was talking about, I, I think we've seen already the difference between Ime and Brad. I don't think Grant Williams would have had a 27-point Game 7 performance if Brad Stevens was still coaching the team. And that's no knock on Brad, but when you listen to the things that Ime talked to Grant about, I don't think it's necessarily Brad's messaging was bad. I just think the manner in which it was delivered was different. And I think it resonates a little bit more with these players than maybe it did with Brad. I mean, Brad would have probably told Grant the same thing. Like Grant, you know, if you're open, you know, take those shots. Don't, you know, don't, don't hesitate, be comfortable. Whereas Ime is like, Grant, they're disrespecting you. 
Yeah, they're, right. they're, they're, they're disrespecting you on a level. They, they've they been disrespecting you this whole series, and they're disrespecting you even more. Now, they're not even pretending to try to they come out They talk about your mama. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I think he may, he is, I mean, he's one of those coaches that does that. He right. will figure out what is, what is, what's that trigger point that I can, I can press that's going to get the, you to be activated and engaged and step your game up and feel that you're the best player on the floor. Um, I mean, the, the idea of Grant Williams taking more three pointers than anyone in a game seven history, it's him true. making the same number of threes in a game seven that Steph Curry has for the NBA record. And, you know, I, that's just, if, to me, a lot of that has to do with obviously the player, but a lot of it has to do with being, being filled with the kind of confidence to do that. His teammates are part of that. Ime is part of that. And Ime, I, again, I, the job that he's done, I, the X's and O's at this point are, to me, they're out the door. It's what can you do from a mental standpoint to get your team in the right frame of mind to be able to execute mm. and in doing that, execute that team out of the damn playoffs. Uh, that's Ime's job right now. And I, I think so far he's done a really good job of it. But Kwani, to your point, to me, Eric Spolster is like the, the low key, you know, uh, he's that dude uh, that that is always – in the mix as one of the top coaches doesn't necessarily get coach of the year but if you were to poll coaches right now and say who's the number one coach in the nba right now i think you would find a lot of votes if not the majority of them will go to eric Spolster. he's done a hell of a job in miami he's won with lots of different lineups and to me if, if i'm email you doka this is the ultimate challenge because if you can hold your own forget about beating him if you can hold your own from an x's and o's and mental uh preparedness standpoint with, with Spolstra, yeah. You are you're doing well. You are doing exceptionally well. And they, again, Spolstra, he's going to force you to make some adjustments. He's that good a coach. And the one thing that his teams are always about is toughness. Uh, that's their DNA. And in many ways, the Celtics are looking at maybe a, a reflection of who they are in Miami. Uh, yeah. Both teams have a lot of talent that is good, but maybe isn't necessarily top five-ish. Uh, and you got a lot of guys with something to prove. And, and I, again, I, I think it's going to be a hell of a series. A uh, hell of a series. We think in game five games, six games, seven games? Let's hear those predictions. I, I know you're not a I, business, I, why not? Gary, Gary don't do that. Gary don't do that. Gary's going to oh, be both, both teams play hard. Make Miss League. Um, I don't care though. I mean, come How at me. How far do you see the series going? At least you don't have at to least it's, at, it's at least six, at least six games. This is going to be at okay. least a six game series. I think to the point that Gary made, game one is going to be a real, I think, kind of litmus test for how this thing is going to yeah. go. Because you know, if the Celtics can go down there and, and just beat the you know, beat the brakes off of the Heat, that's going to put them in a real precarious spot. Because the Celtics, they're at that point now as an organization, if they smell blood in the water, they're not going back to the shore. Hell no, they're going in the deep end. Yeah. They're going for more blood. And, that, and that's the mindset that they have to have. Uh, you know, when they were able to get this series tied up at, at Milwaukee and force a game seven, what did we see? Literally the best game they played the entire series. When they had my aunt, when they had, uh, you know, uh, Brooklyn in a 3-0 hole, game four. Again, they smell blood in the water. KD, we know you're going to you know, have a good game. Kyrie, have a good game. We're still going to beat your ass and send y'all home for the summer. One, two, three, Cancun on you. Here we go. That's the that's the way this team is, I think, built right now. And again, Ime, I think, has a lot to do with that. Uh, that may be the most important offseason acquisition the Boston Celtics have made in maybe the last decade, bringing in Ime. He's been that good, that impressive. The NBA does not play because by the time we come back here next week, we would have seen four games in this matchup already. As all, all, I hope you know, Tuesday is when the Eastern Conference Finals tip off. So that's going to be exciting. I think that's a wrap, though. I mean, there's only so much we can talk about until we've gotten, like you said, that litmus test of game one and see how they do this series. Gary, I also want to congratulate you on getting your master's at okay. University of Nebraska. Go, Gary! Yeah, thank, Go you. Gary. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. It was awesome. It was awesome. Uh, online program, so my first time there was graduation, but it was awesome to be amongst the students I've never been in Nebraska before. I've drove, driven through Nebraska, but never spent the night there or anything. So, yeah, it was an awesome experience to uh, go to, uh, you know, a big university like that in terms of just seeing it, getting the, you know, the taste. You, you, you watch the football games over the years, the big, you know, the big red, Cornhuskers and all that. Yep. Uh, to be there, 
and to you know be part of a, a good journalism program, a program that really uh, is growing. So yeah, I got my master's in journalism, so uh, I could be like Sherrod, maybe Professor Washburn one day. Yeah, if, uh, I want to work. If I want to work with y'all youngsters, I want to work with y'all kids. <laughs> I, know, I know you're a little old, but you know, a little old for that. But if I want to work for kids, because you know how much I love yeah. the kids. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was, a, it was a great, it was a great experience. I suggest anyone who wants to try to, you know, I did it, was able to do it during my, you know, duties uh, at the Boston Globe, and that's impressive. It was obviously, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, obviously, uh, my significant other was. Uh, Oh, you know, kind of tired if you talked about school at times. Yeah. But if you can do it, you know, if I could do it, anyone can do it. Um, in terms of the, you just have to have make some time, have the work ethic, and I spent a summer taking a course and all that. So, uh, yeah, it was a good experience. So, um, I appreciate you guys. And I know Sharad's doing the same thing at some school in in, the, in Upper New York. I can't remember the name. Uh, uh, Bonaventure, yeah, boy, Bonaventure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some 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 uh, parochial school up in North New York, but yeah, I I I, I suggest uh, you know if people want to do it, I think it's great. I want to make a real quick note about this series, so yeah. if you look back, the Celtics one of the Celtics' best defensive games of the season happened in Miami early in the season. Mm-hmm. So fans want to look up, look up the the first meeting in Miami. I think Miami might have like the Celtics were struggling. I think they might have been like four and five or something. And Miami was like 10 and two. Um, I covered that game. It was literally the best defensive game from, might have been what top five from the Udoka era. Cause they had some, they had some other ones since, but they literally smothered the heat. Like, and this was with Kyle Lowry, you know, a fully, I, I want to say a fully healthy heat team. Jimmy Butler, all that. So, and this is when they had Schroeder and, 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 and uh, exactly, 95-78. They barely got 78 points in that game. I mean, it, but it was one of, the Celtics were kind of struggling at that time, but they walked into Miami. If you want to look at maybe a blueprint for how to defend the Heat um, in this series, look at that game. If you November can 4th. catch it. Thank you. November 4th uh, at Miami. That was in person, probably the, at least top two or three, I'd say. Um, yeah, and Tatum had a bad game. And then still, they were able to dominate the Heat. They suffocated the Heat throughout the game. I said, they were lucky to get 78 points. They had, that was some garbage time stuff. But it was like they did not play well enough for 70 points. But if you want to look at how they maybe defend Miami, look at that game, because that was a... Uh, Udoka, early Udoka masterpiece. Yeah. Watch the tape. Sherrod, do you have any personal updates? I mean, it can't be as good as getting a master's, but I'm sure you have something. <laughs> wow. Wow. Look, only only, the only thing I got to update is that I, I, am, I am officially the, the, the proud father of two, not one, but two college graduates. Um, that's a, no, that's a, there we go. My, ba- my baby girl handled her business. Uh, graduated with a 3.99 grade point average, which is incredible. Um, she got more A. She got more A's her first semester, and I got it four years. But so that, but that's you know that's another story for another day, another time. Right. Uh, but she 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 handled the business, and I'm, I'm proud as hell of her. Um, and I'm proud of my boy G for getting his master's. Man, I know I know G is you know I, I get on him about everything because he usually gets most stuff wrong. Um, but he <laughs> he 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 got the he got the going to grad school thing right though. So I, I give him props for that. Um, but other than that, just, just look, just playoff coverage, getting ready for this Miami heat series, literally heading down to Miami in the morning, uh, hang out with G. Uh, we may do a couple of things, podcast related down there. Gary don't know about that yet, but he does now. Wait, which um, podcast? Our podcast? Cause our podcast, means- we'll figure we'll work it out. Kwani. We got you. We got you. The listeners know that there's no respect for me on this podcast, but I have no personal update. So now I feel bad for me. You got your hair did, Kwani. That's an update. I did get my hair done. For those watching on the YouTube, <laughs> we did we did get our hair done. Thank you. Thank you for the round of applause. Because <laughs> boy, if you would have seen it beforehand, <laughs> should have taken a before and after. <laughs> oh, I don't know. We we want we want no, people I don't, to tune I don't in. Share the viewers. We <laughs> want to tune in. We want to increase the numbers. That's fair. I'm just That's saying. Fair. I'm just saying. Oh, this is a wrap on the pre-Eastern Conference Finals matchup, Miami Heat versus the Boston Celtics. 
For Aisha Blakely and Gary Washburn, I'm Kwani A. Lunas. Come back next week for our recap of the first four games. <laughs>